Hey everyone, this video is on the mode of heat transfer. When we discuss the concept of heat, we describe and define heat as the transfer of energy from a system with a higher temperature to a system of lower temperature. Now, in this video, we'll explain the three main mechanisms through how heat can be transferred between systems. We'll look at conduction, convection, and radiation. By the end of the video, you should be able to identify and explain each of the three mechanisms in this diagram. Conduction, specifically thermal conduction, involves the transformation of heat into the kinetic energy of particles in the medium in the form of the vibrations. In other words, when particles receive energy in the form of heat, they will start to move back and forth, causing vibrations, and these vibrations will lead to more frequent collisions between the particles in the medium. When the particles collide, they will be able to transfer energy from one particle to neighboring particles, allowing heat to be transferred through the material. It's important to remember and understand that although particles are vibrating, in thermal conduction, the actual material is not moving. So the particles individually, they are vibrating back and forth, but if you look at the overall structure and the material itself, it is stationary. Thermal conduction occurs most efficiently in solids, and this is primarily due to the tightly compacted structure of particles when a substance is in a solid state. Although thermal conduction does occur to a smaller extent in liquids and gases, you will later see that other form of energy transfer, namely convection, is the more predominant form through which energy is transferred in liquid and gaseous mediums. The term thermal conductivity refers to how well a material transfers heat via this thermal conduction process. When a material is said to have a higher thermal conductivity, it can then transfer energy more efficiently between the vibrations of these particles. I discuss thermal conductivity in greater detail in its own video. Examples of thermal conduction include anything that involves the transfer of heat through solids. For example, if you have left a spoon in a hot cup of water, and later on when you touch a spoon, you will find that the spoon has been warmed or has become hot due to the transfer of heat from the water through the spoon. So in this example, you would expect that the particles in the metal spoon have been vibrating in order to transfer this energy across. When your iron includes, the heat from the iron transfers to the vibration of particles onto the fabric of your clothes. So in both cases, the actual material or the medium through which heat is transferred, so whether this is a spoon or the fabric on your clothes, they are not moving. Only the particles within them are vibrating back and forth. In contrast to thermal conduction, convection is the energy or heat transfer through a material that involves the movement of fluids which consists of liquids and gases, so not solids. Convection occurs due to the relationship between density and the temperature of these fluids. Hotter fluids, so when they have higher temperature or greater amount of kinetic energy in the particles, they will rise due to a lower density. This is because when molecules and particles move around with greater amount of kinetic energy, they tend to spread out, moving further away from each other which is why it has a lower density. Conversely, cooler fluids, ones with lower temperature, will have a lower amount of kinetic energy. So the movement of these particles and molecules in cooler fluids will be closer together with one another and therefore have a higher density compared to hotter fluids. The difference in density between fluids of different temperatures causes the hotter fluid to rise and cooler fluids to sink or move downward. This effect causes movement between fluids of different temperatures, which is what we call convection. So a convection current refers to the relative movement between hot and cool fluids, such that fluids rises when the temperature increases, and they will sink when the temperature decreases. In the example we saw before, when we are heating a pot of water over a campfire, the bottom part of the pot will receive the heat first, and therefore that you would expect the temperature of water near the bottom of the pot to be greater than the top. So the warmer fluid at the bottom of the pot will rise, while the cooler fluid at the top of the pot will sink. This generates what we call a convection current. 
as the warmer fluid rises to the top, the heat that they carry is also transmitted and transferred to the top of the pot. Now, as these warmer fluid reach the top of the pot, they are moving further away from the heat source. So over time, their temperatures will decrease. While the cooler fluids, which now have arrived towards the bottom of the pot, is receiving heat from the campfire source, so they will increase in temperature and therefore rise up again. So this convection current will continue as long as there's a continuous supply of heat source that increases the temperature of the water near the bottom of the pot. Lastly, radiation involves the transfer of heat through the emission of electromagnetic waves. Specifically in the context of thermal radiation, we are referring to the emission of infrared radiation. Recall that infrared radiation is only one of the types of electromagnetic waves. All objects that have a temperature greater than zero kelvins, that means if it's at a temperature greater than the absolute zero, they will emit some amount of infrared radiation. The most important point that you need to remember and understand about radiation is that this mode of energy transfer does not require medium, which means radiation or the emission of electromagnetic waves can occur in a vacuum in the absence of any particles. Remember that in conduction and in convection, we require the presence of particles, whether it's a vibration of particles or the movement of particles to actually allow energy to be transferred. In radiation, we do not need that. Some common examples of radiation includes the emission of sunlight from the sun, which is responsible for regulating the temperature on Earth, and also the heat from a campfire. Both examples involve the propagation of electromagnetic waves, namely infrared radiation. This graph shows you the relative intensity of electromagnetic waves emitted by objects at different temperatures. As you can see, as the temperature of the object increases, it begins to emit a higher intensity of radiation. What's more interesting is that as the temperature of the object increases, it begins to emit electromagnetic waves not limited to infrared radiation. For example, at 4000 kelvins, some of the radiation will be in the form of visible light and a very small part will be ultraviolet radiation. As we further increase this temperature to 5000 to 6000 kelvins, these objects will begin to emit a greater amount or intensity of visible light as well as ultraviolet radiation. These types of electromagnetic waves are emitted in addition to infrared radiation that we discussed earlier. The emission of different types of electromagnetic waves depending on the temperature of the object can be further exemplified by comparing the radiation curve between the sun and the light bulb. Both objects emit heat in the form of radiation, specifically infrared radiation. However, you can see that the sun, due to its much higher temperature compared to the light bulb, emits overall a greater intensity of radiation. In addition, the sun also emits a substantially large amount of visible light as well as ultraviolet radiation on top of the infrared radiation that's responsible for the transmission of heat energy. This concludes the video on energy transfer. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.